Our service. Just before we begin, there are a couple of housekeeping notices. First of all, at the, after the dedication of the stone, wreaths will be laid. Just three wreaths will be laid during the service itself. But if any of you have wreaths or other floral tributes which you wish to lay afterwards, um, then please do wait until after the blessing and then feel free to come forward. You've all got a, an order of service, hopefully, which looks something like that. The day's events are all in the one booklet, so if you're coming on to church later, then please do bring it with you. We do have some extra, just in case you drop them, but uh, if you could bring it with you, we'd be very grateful. The church service is the anchor point for today, because today is the 100th anniversary of that first memorial service to all of the Liverpool Scottish Regiment, and in particular to Noel Shabas, which took place on the 29th of August, 1917. The reports of the service in the press talk of the gales and the storms that were going on outside Liverpool Parish Church at the moment. Um, I'm sure you're very glad that history has not repeated itself. And finally, before we begin, a very big thank you to all of the organising committee who put together the three events for today beginning with this a church service at two and then this evening the vigil. The, uh, it's been a multi-agency approach as Noel Shabas has touched so many corners of Liverpool from his schooling through to his education and work and the military as well as the church. We have all come together to make today a fitting commemoration to the memory of Noel Shabas. So, let us stand as we begin. We gather to commemorate Noel Shabas and to celebrate both his bravery and the service he gave to his fellow soldiers. As we remember him, we also remember with thanksgiving and sorrow those whose lives in world wars and conflicts past and present have been given and taken away. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, from whose love in Christ we cannot be parted, either by death or life. Hear our prayers and thanksgivings for Nul Shavas and all whom we remember this day. Fulfill in them the purpose of your love, and bring us all with them to your eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Most holy God and Father, Hear our prayers for all who strive for peace and all who fight for justice. Help us who today remember the cost of war to work for a better tomorrow. And as we commend to you lives lost in terror and conflict, bring us all in the end to the peace of your presence through Christ our Lord. Amen. So let us join together as we pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as the Right Worshipful Lord Mayor of Liverpool, Councillor Malcolm Kennedy, comes forward. Welcome to this centenary commemoration, an unveiling of a Victoria Cross paving cell in honour of Captain Noel Chavas from the Royal Army Medical Corps. I would also like to offer a special welcome to the family of Noel Shabas, and on behalf of the city of Liverpool, 
thank you all for attending and taking part in this commemoration service. The VC Paving Stones programme is a national scheme run by the Department for Communities and Local Government, which will see every World War I Victoria Cross recipient remembered in this way. In Liverpool alone, there will be a total of 10 stones unveiled, which will be sited in a location specific to where the individual was either born or may have lived. As we know, no one was born in Oxford. However, in 1900, at the age of 16, he moved to Liverpool when his father, the Right Reverend Francis Chivas, took up the post of the second Bishop of Liverpool. The family lived in the Bishop's Palace at 19 Abercrombie Square, which is just over the road behind me from here. And the Victoria Cross is the highest and most prestigious award for gallantry in the face of the enemy that can be awarded to British and Commonwealth forces. And Captain Noel Chavas was the only person to be awarded the Victoria Cross twice for his bravery during the First World War. Noel Chavas was a courageous medical doctor whose selfless actions saved many lives. He had been set for a brilliant career in medicine, but instead he became one of the most extraordinary soldiers Britain has ever seen, and we are all incredibly proud of him. The action for which Noel Chavas received his bar took place between the 31st of July and the 2nd of August 1917 during the Third Battle of Ypres in Belgium, which was an attempt to recapture Passchendaele Ridge. Soldiers from Britain, Canada, New Zealand, Australia, South Africa, India, Belgium and France fought and died together on the battlefield, resulting in the loss of around 325,000 Allied troops. Today, we honour the local impact of the Great War and the gallantry and selfless actions of Captain Noel Chavas. Exactly a hundred years ago, he fought for the freedom and peace that we all enjoy today. Therefore, as we stand here in this peaceful garden, we should give, reflect and give thanks to Noel and others who gave so much for their country and our liberty. Before I conclude, may I also take this opportunity to thank all those who have organised and taken part in today's service, in particular the Shabbat's family, the Bishop of Liverpool, guest speakers, Liverpool Welsh Choral, and of course our military representatives from the Royal Army Medical Corps, the Liverpool Scottish and the Duke of Lancashire Regiment. I'd also like to thank the University of Liverpool for supporting this event and for authorising the installation of this stone in these wonderful and fitting gardens. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now my pleasure to invite Rachel Sinfield the great niece of Noel Chavas, to tell us more. Thank you. I might be about a foot smaller than all the other speakers, so I just wanted to check, can you all hear me? Um, it's my honour to be representing the Chavas family today and to be remembering my great uncle, Maud Chavas. 
I hope to be able to show how his formative years developed the man who went on to give such great service in World War I until his death in 1917, and which others today will describe. My name is Rachel Sinfield, and my mother was Anna Shabazz, the fourth child and eldest daughter of Christopher, who was Noel's identical twin. Their father, Francis Chavas, was the descendant of a Frenchman who had settled in England in the early 18th century, and I'm delighted that Bertrand Chavas is here with his family from France today. The family tended towards medicine and the church, and Francis was rector of St. Peter Le Bailey in Oxford. His wife, Edith, was the daughter of a vicar, and together they had seven children. The eldest was Dorothea, then Noel and Christopher were born in 1884, followed by non-identical twins, Marjorie and May, and then brothers Bernard and Aidan. Francis Chavas went on to become principal of Wycliffe Hall, the college in Oxford which prepared students for ordination in the Church of England. And at 12, the boys were cycling back and forth to Magdalen College School and had every expectation of completing their school days in Oxford. But as the Lord Mayor said, in 1900, their father was appointed Bishop of Liverpool. Noel and Christopher both wanted to stay on at their school in Oxford as boarders, but their father disagreed. Francis felt very strongly about home and family. And he considered that it was important for their moral and mental development that they all stayed together during their formative years. So age 16, the boys were enrolled at Liverpool College to be prepared for university. At the college, Noel became involved with the Holy Trinity Certified Industrial School for Boys in Grafton Street, Totsdorf Park. The aim of this institution was to rescue deprived children from, and I quote, present wretchedness and vice and from future criminality, close quotes. As a volunteer, he led sing songs and Bible readings, organized games, and went on to the school's annual summer camps, showing the same concern for his charges that he later displayed for the soldiers in his care. It was at Liverpool College that both boys showed outstanding ability in athletics, with Noel setting new school records in the 100 yards, 400 yards and the mile. At Oxford in 1907, Noel and Christopher both won blues for running against Cambridge, and they both ran in the heats for the 400 metres to represent Britain in the Olympic Games of 1908. In his final years at Oxford, Noel also played in the college rugby team. He wrote home, I must say, you do get to know people well when you are both battling and sweating to win a match for your college. Altogether a much decenter thing than winning pots for oneself. I can't help but think that this level of physical fitness and sense of teamwork are inner resources that Noel would draw on later. Noel's academic process and sense of vocation were equally strong. He read natural sciences at Oxford, where he gained a first class degree, and began his postgraduate studies for medicine there. And in 1909, he returned to Liverpool and joined the medical school of the university as a full time student. His studies in Liverpool included work in several new fields, including vaccination bacteriology and infectious diseases. And once qualified, his first post was as house surgeon at the Royal Southern Hospital in Topstead, which provided medical care for the poor. And it was from this hospital that he joined the Royal Army Medical Corps and through them the 10th Battalion of the King's Liverpool Regiment, known as the Liverpool Scottish. When Colonel W. Nichols, commanding officer of the Liverpool Scottish, offered his battalion for service at the front. Noel was sent to Chester to examine and vaccinate recruits. He was terribly afraid that he was going to be left behind, and in a letter home he said, I have a great longing to take care of a regiment. When I go out with the Scottish boys, I feel quite paternal and love keeping them fit and dressing their minor injuries. I think it is the pastoral spirit for the care and cure of their bodies instead of souls, although I do care for their souls too, only it is not my business to cater for them. If ever I get to the front with a regiment, I shall almost shed tears of joy. 
I will leave to others to take up the story of Noel's military record, but I'd like to make two final points from a family perspective. Noel's sense of family was very strong, and the other great love of his life was in fact a cousin, Gladys Chavez. We know of his interest in Gladys from a visit he made to her family in 1910, but it was not until the death of her father, who did not approve of their match, that Noel plucked up the courage to propose to Gladys. Alas, despite this extended courtship, they were never to marry, and Noel's last message to Gladys was from his deathbed, and he said, tell her that duty called and called me to obey. Of course, the Shabazz family was only one of many families in Liverpool and beyond, whose direction and lives were permanently affected by the First World War. Noel's death came just weeks after the news that his younger brother Aidan had been lost in battle. Apparently, their mother never really fully recovered from the shocks that the war had dealt her. Every year on the anniversary of Aidan's death, she dreamt that he was calling to her from no man's land, and on the eve of the 10th anniversary she died. I'd like to finish with words from my grandfather Christopher. As he approached the end of his life in the early 1960s, he wrote to a friend, My loss of my twin was like amputation. I felt half of me had gone, for we were extremely close. I still mourn my love, every day of my life and have done so for 44 years. I still seem to think things over with Noel and to feel that he might walk into the room any minute and sometimes I wake in the morning feeling that I have been with him in my sleep and I believe that our spirits have been together. To continue Noel's story I'd like to hand over to Bill Sargent. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Surgeon Lieutenant Noel Shabas was granted his wish, and on the 2nd of November 1914, he sailed with the Liverpool Scottish for France, where they waited their turn to be sent to the front. Noel wrote home to assure his family that, in his words, he would be behind at headquarters, probably in a dugout where I sit and wait for the wounded to be brought to me. I believe that doctors are not allowed in the trenches, so really I shall run very little risk during the war and don't intend to run any risk at all unnecessarily. My blood is not heroic. How subtly ironic that is in the light of what we now know. On the 27th of November 1914, Noel felt the horror for the first time of warfare when one of his fellow officers like Noel, an old boy of Liverpool College, was the first Liverpool Scottish officer to be killed, and Noel and his stretcher bearers had the job of bringing his body back for burial. From then on, he was to be dealing with bullet wounds, shell splinter damage, shrapnel injuries, gas, for which his time at the Royal Southern Hospital had not really prepared him. In a letter home, he said, the wounds I had to dress were not the clean punctures I had imagined gunshot wounds to be. To take an instance of a wound in the fleshy part of the thigh, the entrance hall was neat and punctured, but the exit was a gaping burst, a big hole that I could put my fist into, with broken muscles hanging out. And his job was made even more difficult because of the muddy conditions which meant that the wounded were brought into him in a filthy state and as there was no ready water supply, all Noel could do, again in his own words, was paint the wound with iodine, swab it with pure carbolic, and bandage it. Noel Shabazz's gallantry in uniform, although he saw himself as a doctor, not a fighting soldier, can be summed up if somewhat inadequately better by the awards he received. Although those who served with him were at pains to point out that these were not isolated actions, but rather mere illustrations of what he and his stretcher bearers were doing day after day. I should mention here 
that Noel had the utmost respect for his stretcher bearers. And I know that we have with us today relatives of some of those stretcher bearers. On 15th of June 1915, the Liverpool Scottish took part in an attack on the village of Rouge and suffered severe casualties. 21 of their 23 officers and 379 of their 519 men had been killed, wounded, taken prisoner, or were missing. But Noel had left the comparative safety of the dressing station and spent the night in the trenches, tending wounded comrades who were so weak that they couldn't call out. Their joy and relief on being found was pitiful, so said one of his stretcher bearers. For his valiant efforts to help his wounded comrades, Noel was awarded a military cross. On the 9th of August 1916, during the Battle of the Somme, the Liverpool Scottish, accompanied by their intrepid medical officer, took part in a number of attacks on the village of Guillemont, again sustaining heavy casualties. 17 of 20 officers and 263 of 600 men killed, wounded or missing. And Noel himself received a shrapnel wound in his back while in no man's land looking for wounded men. One of his comrades recalled, the amazing thing about this rescue exploit was that the doc carried and used his electric torch as he walked about between the trenches, whistling and calling out to wounded men. Ignoring the sniper's bullets, he carried on with his work of succour throughout the hours of darkness. In the words of another stretcher bearer, the captain took no more notice of the enemy's fire than he would of a few raindrops. He made us all feel it was an honour to work with him. And Noel was awarded his Victoria Cross. As you've heard in June 1917, Noel's twin brother, I'm sorry, if you haven't heard yet, you've got to hear now. In June 1917, Noel's twin brother Christopher was awarded, awarded a military cross. But shortly afterwards, as you have heard, on the 4th of July, their younger brother Aidan was wounded, posted and missing, and subsequently presumed killed in action. Nor was certainly aware of Aidan's fate when the Liverpool Scottish took their places in the trenches in the front of the village of Wiltshire during what is now called the Battle of Passchendaele. Between 21st and 24th of July 1917, the battalion lost four officers and 141 men to German artillery fire and mustard gas attack. After a few days to reorganise on the 31st of July, they advanced to attack the German 45 positions on Passchendaele Ridge. Early in the attack, in the attack, Noel was hit by a shell, which probably fractured his skull. But having his wound dressed, he returned to his aid post, and in appalling conditions, continued treating the queue of wounded soldiers who were brought to him. Risking the constant enemy artillery barrage with little food and even less water, again and again, Noel and his bearers went out to fetch the wounded. That evening rain began to fall and continued to do so throughout the night, turning trenches into muddy ditches half filled with water. And morning brought an appalling scene with mud and water everywhere, and dead men, dead mules, damaged tanks and broken trees all around. The following day Noel narrowly avoided death when a shell flew past him and killed one of the wounded. He was possibly wounded again when the shell exploded. And Henry Willink, later Sir Henry, whose sister Beatrice was later to marry Noel's twin Christopher, and who was serving with the Royal Field Artillery at the time, wrote home to say that Noel had been wounded three times before he received the wound which was to kill him. Despite his own wounds, wounds, Noel continued treating his comrades. At 3am 3 3 on the 2nd of August, a shell found its way into Noel's dugout aid post, while Noel's, Noel was dozing after a strenuous day. It exploded, and all the occupants were either killed or badly wounded. Noel received a number of wounds, the most serious being a gaping wound, wound to his abdomen. Yet he still managed to crawl up the stairs and outside to seek help for the wounded. And he even examined his own wound, 
when the medical staff at the nearby dressing station, no doubt instructed to do so by Noel, went off to attend the other wounded. He was treated initially at 46 Field Ambulance by the only man at that time who had been awarded a VC in bar, Lieutenant Colonel Arthur Martin Lee. Before taking to Casualty Clearing Station number 32 at Brandhoek, where he was immediately operated upon. At first, it seemed that he was likely to recover from his wounds. But at one o'clock on 4th of August 1917, Noel Chivas died, aged almost 33 years. He was buried next day in a small cemetery at Brandhoek, his funeral be att being attended by many of his battalion and other colleagues his medical friends, and the nursing staff, as well as all senior officers. Noel was subsequently awarded a posthumous part of his Victoria Cross, <coughs> making him the most highly decorated World one, War I soldier, and the only man to be awarded a VC and bar in the Great War. Henry Welling, Welling said of him that Noel had earned the Victoria Cross at least four times on the day he was wounded, and in the words of the local Scottish historian, there never was a man who was better loved by officers and men alike. There never was a man who gave himself more unsparingly in the service of others. The award of the bar to his VC was a fit reward, but only because there's no higher distinction. Noel Chivas had given it everything, including his life in his quest to serve his fellow men to his utmost ability. Who knows what he might have gone on to achieve if he'd been allowed to live. And now I'd like, like to hand you to the Colonel Commandant of the Royal Army Medical Corps, Brigadier Peter Provisius. On behalf of His Royal Highness, the Duke of Gloucester, Colonel-in-Chief, and all ranks of the Royal Army Medical Corps, my thanks to the city and to the Diocese of Liverpool, and to all who have arranged this very special commemoration today. From the London Gazette, 14th of September, 1917. His Majesty the King has been graciously pleased to approve of the award of a bar to the Victoria Cross to Captain Noel Godfrey Chavez, VC, MC, late of the Royal Army Medical Corps and the Liverpool Regiment, for the most conspicuous bravery and devotion to duty when in action. Though severely wounded early in the action whilst carrying a wounded soldier to the dressing station, Captain Chavas refused to leave his post and for two days not only continued to perform his duties but in addition went out repeatedly under heavy fire to search for and attend to the wounded who were lying out. During these searches, although practically without food during this period, worn with fatigue and faint with his wound, he assisted to carry a number of badly wounded men over heavy and difficult ground. By his extraordinary energy and inspiring example, he was instrumental in rescuing many wounded who would otherwise undoubtedly have succumbed under the bad weather conditions. This devoted and gallant officer subsequently died of his wounds. Thank you.
please stand for the unveiling of the centenary stone by the Lord Mayor of Liverpool and the dedication by the Bishop of Liverpool, the Right Reverend Paul Bayes. Almighty God, in the brutality of conflict, we see still the light of your presence. As we remember your servant Noel Chavez, who professed your name in his care of the wounded and dying, bless this memorial stone, which we dedicate in his honor May his example never cease to remind us of the life that we are to share in Christ, who will transform our earthly bodies to be like his in glory, for he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them.
When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow, we gave our today. We remain standing as wreaths are now laid on behalf of the city of Liverpool by the Lord Mayor, on behalf of the Shavas family on behalf of the Royal Army Medical Corps. will join in singing the hymn that is printed in the order of service and then as we disperse the Welsh Liverpool Welsh choral will remain and will sing continue to sing as we go and then at two o'clock this afternoon there will be the service in church which will draw on many of the elements of the first memorial service a century ago let us pledge ourselves anew to the service of God and our fellow men and women that we may help, encourage and comfort others and support those working for the relief of the needy and for the peace and welfare of the nations. Lord God our Father, we pledge ourselves to serve you and all humankind in the cause of peace, for the relief of want and suffering and for the praise of your name. Guide us by your Spirit Give us wisdom, give us courage, give us hope, and keep us faithful now and always. Amen. Humankind, unity, peace and concord. And to us and all his servants, life everlasting, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, come down upon you all, and remain with you always. Amen.